Jumbo Weekends and new listeners, welcome to the Magic Army podcast from New Orleans, Louisiana, in the United States of America. We present a trip report show where we discuss Lee's VIP tour in Walt Disney World back in September 2022. For this show, we have Eli, Lee, and myself, Kevin. And you may notice Danny is not on this recording. Unfortunately, he's been ruled out for today's game. And so if you haven't started, make sure you switch him out before the show releases on Wednesday, whenever you're listening to this, or else you will not get any points from him. He'll be back with us next week. Uh, hopefully he's feeling better. He just got a little bit of the sickness. Something. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Mysterious. Yeah, with the sickness. I know. It doesn't sound, sound too fun at all, but he had to bow out for this one, and that's okay. We'll, we'll keep the show rolling in his stead, in his honor, and talk about your VIP tour, man. So you ready, Lee? Yeah, man, I'm ready to chat it up. I think this is going to be a, a very informative show for, for people that haven't experienced this before. All right, well, let's get to it. All right, so here we are, and like I said, we're going to discuss Lee's VIP tour back in Walt Disney World back in September 2022. So if you're following us on social media, no doubt you saw a bunch of his pictures, you saw the blue plaid that he was rolling around with, all the different things, all the different rides that he was got to experience so, uh, Liam, I'm going to turn it over to you, man. Why don't you take us through your little adventure? Uh, what, what, what was it like? What, what happened? I thought we could do today is first, I'll just break down what the tour entails. You know, what's included with the tour, how it works. I'll give you a breakdown of what we actually accomplished on our tour. Some highlights here and there and some of the things that really I didn't expect from this VIP tour. So things that you might not get, you know, you might not get from reading the description website, things like that. And then after that, possibly have a little short discussion on whether we think this is, uh, you know, quote unquote, worth it for the money that you pay for these VIP tours. Yeah. So a little background, about a month or two ago, our agency reached out to us on our you know social media page and said, hey, who would be interested in doing a VIP tour? We've got some opportunities and these are the dates that we can do it. Let me know who can go and what dates work best. So we all, anyone that was interested in going, we submitted our names. We put, you know, what date would work best for us, if we could go all three dates or, you know, which dates we could do, couldn't do, things like that. And then the agency owner picked basically 10 of us to go on this tour. I was very happy to be able to do this. This is like a bucket list type item, you know, something that I don't know if I ever would have gotten the opp opportunity to do this uh, had it not been for me being a travel agent and us having the opportunity to to offer this to the agency. So, uh, so I was pretty happy about it. It's pretty excited. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, in it, fact, yeah. I was to the point where I didn't know where I was going to stay, you know, how I was going to pay for it, you know, things like this, but I figured one way or the other, I was going to make it happen. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I was going to make it happen. I actually originally had just booked like a cheap offsite hotel and some free nights saved up, things like that. And then it just so happens, Kevin had mentioned that he had some DVC points that were going to expire and, you know, just threw it out there. If anyone needed them, I was like, Hey man, you know, this works out great if I could use them because I would obviously rather stay on an offsite anytime. And so definitely want to give a special thank you to Kevin, because if not for, you know, I'd have been staying for suites on I drive or something, man, sleeping in my car. I don't know what I would have done, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right in, the so, car. in a van down yeah, by the man. river. <laughs> 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 Probably would have been a river if we'd have gone last week. Uh, oh, 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 you guys yeah. had some clients there that uh, had an, an adventure to say the least with the hurricane. But um, really, no, man. Uh, yeah, they. I'll I'll save that for another show. But basically, they were in Universal days and were moving over to Disney. It was hitting and mm -hmm. decided, hey, man, we're gonna roll with it. And uh, I made a little TikTok about that too. But really, get to work as a travel agent and rearrange some things and make sure they got. Uh, the most they could out of their trip, but uh, that's a show for another day. Okay, so yeah, it sounds like I'd be curious to hear how they, how you handle that as an agent on yeah. this side. So TCCs, uh, we were, we'll just say that you know we are definitely on call twenty four seven. There is no closing time for travel agents. So even but, uh, if you know so if you're, like, you're in the middle of the throes of passion with your wife, you get a call, you gotta you gotta take it. <laughs> I'd be like, that's how it works on. for the thrills of passion. You gotta take. I'd be it. like, go slower, baby. Give me, give me five minutes. Go slower, baby. <laughs> Hold <laughs> you, Rusty. Hold it. Hand me my phone. <laughs> this person needs me right now. Oh, oh what about man. the poly? Oh, wait. Hold on. Uh, to the left, babe. All right. Thanks. <laughs> well, we, have to, we have to do a lightning lane real quick. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, we were able to uh, get a room over at Kingdom Lodge, Jumbo House. And um, really, thanks again, Kevin, for that, because... 
we had a jumbo house back in April with the travel agency and, and it was nice. I really liked it, but I definitely was like, man, I really would like to bring my kid back here because I know he loves animals and he would just love staying there. But just so happens that room that we got was convenient, man. Just like if you can imagine where the, the lobby is in animal in jumbo house, and then mm-hmm. you go to the off to the right a little bit and there's an elevator. So you just go up the elevators and then go pass back by over the, where the lobby's at. And our room was right there, man. Like super convenient, had a nice view, had a Savannah view. Got to see some animals. Joshua was, was loving it, man. Got to see some zebras and some ostriches and all kinds of stuff. So I was, was about to ask if uh, Joshua really liked it. Since he, he did. Got to see animal, yeah. He really did. You know, and we didn't get to spend as much time in the room as we would normally have done as much time as the resort if we were doing a vacation. But I felt like he at least got to take advantage of that Savannah view. And, you know, the first morning when we got up, there were some zebras out there. The second morning, there were some ostriches. We can go into the actual trip part later, but we didn't get a really do the pool but we ended up going to to the water parks to typhoon lagoon so he was happy with that nice yeah man so again nice room great location couldn't have asked for you know a better situation especially for it being such a short trip some people that were joining were actually so happened to be in disney at that time and so it just kind of worked out like hey man we're already here on vacation with our families so we can join this tour whereas me we didn't have a trip planned and so this was a very quick one and done in and out situation we came in late wednesday night we had the VIP tour Thursday about later on the afternoon on Friday. So again, it was a real quick trip. And I also didn't want to miss too much school, you know, because we'd already, you know, it, you just, you never know what's going to happen in the future. If you need those off days for anything. So, yeah, you know, it's cool though, because you kind of lucked out because I had to put you on a wait list that to get that true, room. Because right. for some reason, like in the month of September, like there were hardly any DVC rooms available, which is kind of wild. I, I didn't which, expect yeah. that. It is weird because September is a relatively slow time. Usually. But but maybe, you know, the owners were doing what, you know, you had to do, which was, you know, burn up points that and if they didn't want to lose them. Right. So, but yeah, you're right. We had to, we had to wait on a wait list. So luckily all that worked out and we were able to stay at the, uh, the Animal Kingdom Lodge. And Joshua got animals. Sir. And he got Chick-fil-A, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we were going to be getting in late that night because we didn't land in Orlando till like nine. And I knew everything was going to be closed. Even when we got to the hotel and everything was going to be closed. So before we got to the airport in Houston, we stopped by Chick-fil-A, grabbed like three sandwiches and I put them in the suitcase and we took them with us. So. <laughs> Okay. So we have sound just through security? Yeah, yeah. You can take food through security. You just can't take water. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I wonder what they're thinking. It's like, man, they go through in the luggage and they see this little sandwich. Yeah. Well, there's like of a three sandwich. or four sandwiches. <laughs> I think I got like, like four chicken sandwiches because, you know, that kid eats chicken 24-7. So I was like, I, even like, I wasn't sure if he would even like anything for breakfast if we found something. So. Was your bag like wafting of Chick-fil-A? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Uh, so, I mean, you probably made every security guard hungry, I think. Yeah. I'll look, I'll look at him and look at each other like, this dude actually pack a sandwich in here. <laughs> they got trying to smuggle sandwiches in there. Yeah, they're taking it, sticking their nose in the wrapper and making sure that's, that's what's in there. I'm going to have to taste chicken. this, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure it's, it's legitimate chicken. Yeah. Did you use the coupon or no? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's man. the sauce. Yes. Yeah. Again, so we didn't even check bags either because we were just, again, trying to get there as soon as possible. But the crazy thing is like, I, I think I got the weirdest Uber driver, or Lyft driver in existence. Like this dude had no idea what he was doing. <laughs> oh, like, did he try to like take a, you to a... Uh... Where was that we ended up with in last year? Oh, the, uh, when we were trying uh, to go to Riviera. Riviera, Florida. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. There's, take a, you there? there's a city called Riviera, Florida. And he was trying to say, he was, no, no, it wasn't like that. And it wasn't as bad as like Eli and Danny's situation. Like I wasn't ever in danger of getting shot. Oh, yeah. But, that's uh, always fun. <laughs> that's the benchmark. But no, though, man. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's like, <laughs> that's the, the story to top. So I can't top that story. But so the drive in, he's like, okay, cool. We're just chit chatting. Where was it? Hey, man, I got to stop and get gas or we're going to, you know, we're not going to make it. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, cool, man. Well, let's do that because I don't want to get stranded on the side of the road. So yeah, let's do that first. And um, so he gets. Did he gas. say, "Hey, you got a 20? <laughs> yeah, right. Can you pay me up front? <laughs> yeah. Can you go ahead Help and, me out and pay yeah. for my ride so I can get so, this. Can you, spot, um, can you spot me some? <laughs> yeah. Give me. Can you cash at me some gas? Bro? Yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, "Oh, and uh, we got to get some air too because I got my my tires are low and." I got these special tires that they'll let me drive, but they won't let me go over 40 miles an hour if, if they're low. So we had to get air in the tires. I'm like, all right. So finally get on the road. And like, I'm not the greatest person with directions. And even with GPS, like I can get lost. But this dude really is like not understanding how to use GPS. Like it would say like merge to the left and he would get confused and like, which way do I go? And then he would miss the exit. 
So he's got to pull over on the median, like not in the middle of the freeway, but like on the exit part where there's a little space. Yeah, yeah. He would stop there and wait for traffic to clear so we wouldn't get hit and then go to the exit. That happened like three or four times. And I'm like, dude, what? The thing's telling you merge left. Like, why are you doubting it? It's (laughs) telling you go left. Why do you want to go right? Because there's one part where you can either go to Animal Kingdom Park or you go to Animal Kingdom Lodge. And it is telling him to go left. And he's like, oh, like he didn't know where to go. And I'm like, dude, the thing's telling you where to go. Like, just listen to the GPS. It's telling you. I don't take like orders a, from a machine. Yeah. Like, make a decision. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Commit. So. <laughs> but we got there. And, you know, I think that's probably the reason we got in a little late, too, is because of the driver. But, uh, but well, we good got thing you packed some sandwiches then. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it, dude. I was like, yeah, we got to be prepared. Maybe the sandwiches yeah. being like six hours old and a day old. But it threw off his senses a little bit. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But uh, so, did, did you get any like sandwich grease on like your clothing or anything, or did you have it like hermetically? No, wrapped? it's in a little. It's in the little package, you know. I mean, like the little. Well, it's in like a paper package. bag, from what I remember for Chick Fil A. Yeah, like a little so foil paper so, bag. I mean, oh, we did smell like Chick Fil A the next day, but that's all right. <laughs> all the animals are kind of looking at you. The animals, right? <laughs> that's why the animals are coming to your room. <laughs> They're like, hey, <laughs> what it was? That's the Lord's chicken. Let me get some of that. That's oh, the Lord's boy. chicken. <laughs> but they uh, brought us a meal. Yeah. So we got there, man. We got checked in. And, you know, and again, it was a late night. So we, were, we just went straight to bed and we get ready for the VIP. So if you're interested in booking a VIP tour, this is basically what you could expect. Okay. Number one, it's a seven hour minimum. Um, you can do more if you want to. You can schedule for more. Or even if your seven hours is up and you talk to your uh, your tour guide, they'll they'll go longer. You just got to pay for it. But you do have to do a seven hour minimum. Now, keep in mind that that seven hour minimum is four hundred and fifty to eight hundred and fifty dollars an hour, depending on the season, you know, time of year, things like that. So it could definitely add up. I'll get to that in a minute, but I did a little math on that. And Disney's making some pretty decent money on uh, on these uh, <laughs> on these tours. Four hundred fifty to eight hundred fifty dollars an hour, seven hour minimum. All right. That's a big range. <laughs> it is. It is. And I looked up some of the, the prices and it's it's weird the way it works. But, you know, it's not like, OK, everything in October is going to be 850. Like there, there's some days in October that are 400 and there's some that are 800. So it just really is depending on how busy they think it's going to be. So max 5600 at least. Right. Or at yeah. most. Right. Damn. Yeah, exactly. For how yeah. many people? So you can go up to 10 people. That's another thing that you should know. You can get up to 10 people. Um, with that with, price, it's not any price. per person. Okay. No, no, no. With that price. Now you can't, but you can't even do like, oh, let me pay a little extra for an 11th person. No, it's only 10. That's the max. Like it's, you can go, really? yeah, you can go up to 10, have two, you can have one, you can have 10. You can have more than, more than 10. You got to pay for two tour guides. So you have to, you know, we like split it in half or something. So if you got, Damn. and also those 10 people includes infants. So even though an infant is not a ticketed person, they're a person on the tour, so you got to. That's one of your ten. If you but have they can't handle an infant. Well, you'd be surprised what they do. Like this girl was pushing the stroller around and grabbing snacks for everybody. So yeah, I guess they could handle an infant. But again, it's Damn. just ten people. Oh, I, I know didn't they did know, all that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know babysitting was involved in it. Yeah, I, absolutely. Okay. Now that cost does not include a park ticket. You still have to have a park ticket to get into the park. So you got to uh, pay for the tour and you got to pay for your ticket or have an annual pass. I'm out. Um, <laughs> if you if, have, if, even start yet, I know. you can't be out. I mean, I can't even pay for it. I'm out. 850 is, 850 is kind of steep, no matter what you put that on. I mean, you know, yeah. no, that's it's, that, that's per hour, per hour, Jesus, per, per hour, hours. per hour, seven, seven hour minimum. So that's what Kevin's saying. Like eight times 50. seven, that's 56. So oh. at most, you could pay yeah. 5,600 for the t- 5,600. Yeah, so, she got to watch the baby and she had to have your baby. Fifty six hundred. Oh, baby, cost you more than fifty six hundred for a baby, though. Good lord, she got you for eighteen years. (laughs) Yeah, but I got her for only seven hours. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. Um, So yeah, you got to have a a ticket for the day, and also if you want to hop, you got to have a park hopper ticket. You can do just one day in the in just one park if you want to just spend all day in the park. You don't have to park hop, but if you want to do multiple parks, you still got to have a park hopper ticket too. So y'all, did y'all have to pay for the tour and the ticket? Yeah, we or, did have to pay for the tour. Um, again, this was offered to our agency. One thing that was a little different is they gave us a six-hour tour instead of a seven-hour tour. Uh, I don't know if they just did that for just our agency or just when a travel agency does it in general, but they did give us a six-hour tour. But again, you, we still had to pay for our tickets and to have a park hop. That was our plan. We were going to go to multiple parks. We wanted to try to hit up as many big attractions as we could. So even then, like the tickets for me and Joshua, just for a one-day ticket, was uh three hundred and sixty bucks. 
Okay. With mm-hmm. Park Hopper. And we ended up doing the water parks since I already had the Park Hopper. It was only like $20 more each. So we added the water parks. We go to the water park on Friday. Nice. But so, yeah, I mean, it's still 400 bucks for a day of ticket, basically. Yeah. Okay. So, for a quick so little park trip. Hopper, I always look at the Park Hopper as like a good uh, add on if you know you're going to park hop because it's the same cost whether you use it one day or you use it five days. But in this case, we were only going to use it for one day. But mm-hmm. uh, so that that was cool. Uh, but yeah, so we had to do that. And you still got to have a park reservation as well. Um, so there's not like a special thing. Like if, if Hollywood Studios is booked up that day and you're trying to book a VIP tour, you technically can't start at Hollywood Studios. Now we could hop like anyone else, but you got to have a park day reservation and start somewhere as well. Now, do you still have to wait for that time in the afternoon to hop like uh, anybody um, else? Yeah. or? that in the details but no we didn't that was that was a good thing oh so, so that's a, that's a perk of the vip that's thing. definitely a perk of the vip that was one of those things that i didn't know going into this is that we could hop before two o'clock so that was good uh, so we talked about the 10 people um and i somehow missed this you will be going through backstage areas as well and i didn't realize that and i'll get to that in a little bit when we talk about some of the things that surprised me or that i learned on this tour but we actually go through the backstage areas as well so that's that's basically if you go online you want to book a tour that's all the information that disney gives you Okay. And this is something you can book for cu- customers, right? Absolutely. 100%. That's the reason why they wanted us to go on these tours is to be able to market it and to sell it to product, our clients. Yeah. Product knowledge. Yeah. That makes product sense. Product knowledge. 100%. Sense. Once you have it set up, you're going to get a VIP tour guide assigned to you. And a at plaid. This point, a plaid. Exactly. You're going to get a plaid. Okay. You're going to get a plaid. And this T-plaid. person is going to be your person for the day. <laughs> and also they're going to be working you before you even get to the thing, uh, before you even get to Disney to find out what do you guys want to do. Like, do you guys want to do one park or you want to do a lot of parks? What are your priorities? And then he or she will then will lay out a plan that will be the most time efficient and get the most for your money, so to speak. Wait, so how does that work? Do they get like a little group text going with you guys or do you have like a, well, a Teams message or Slack or how does that work? So teams what, message. What, <laughs> the way it works on Disney Zen is we had one point of contact, which was one of the agents, Elizabeth. This was her... She was of organizing everything. So she was the liaison to, to the VIP tour and she would relay all the information that we had discussed. So we had a little group chat set up where we would talk about, you know, where do we want to start? What time do we want to get started? What ride priorities, which of course everyone wanted to do Guardians, the new Cosmic Rewind. So that was, yeah, I want to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. I love about that uh, at the end here with you, Kevin, because it was, it was fun. It was a fun ride. So it was group. We were all talking. She was basically talking to Elizabeth. And relaying the information to us. But at the same time, we were all putting in our two cents and, you know, we wanted to do with the, with the tour, things like that. Were there, were there any arguments? It's like, I want to do it. Not really, of course. You know, we're all professionals. So again, everyone wanted to do Guardians. There was a couple of people that hadn't done Remy. So they wanted to do that, which I was fine with that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Flights of Passage was one of the top ones that was requested. Uh, let me think what else was there like. If- I think it was like really big on the list. Star Wars, Rise of Resistance? Yeah, oh, yeah. Rise of Resistance, yeah, 100%. I'm about to that say, was, yeah. Yeah, that was definitely in the top of the list. All the time. For Hollywood Studios, there was kind of some back and forth on Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster. Actually, one of the girls didn't want to do it, so she actually sat out when we did that. But we were going to get in about 10 or 12 attractions, so we, we came up with our top four, and then everyone else was like, okay, we'd like to do this. And if we have time, I'd like to do this. And if we don't, okay. then that's fine. You know, I could live without Test Track, for example. And if we don't get to it, that's cool. We've done it before. The, the newer rides, especially for some people that hadn't maybe been to Disney, and, uh, Remy, Guardians, and Rise of Resistance and Flights of Passage. Those are like the top four. One thing that I kind of knew this, but you may not realize this, is that you, it is a VIP tour and you are being walked through the lines, but it's not a quote unquote front of the line. You don't go in front of everybody else. What you do is go through the lightning lane or what used to be the fast pass lane. So Mm -hmm. when you would notice, if you think back, if you ever saw any of the tour guides in the parks, you would probably see that like, oh, who's that going in the the fast pass lane? You know, like they're obviously somebody important because they got, they're with a a guide, like a a cast member. Right. So so that's one thing that you do want to realize is like, it's not just like, oh, you just cut in front of everyone 100, but you do go to the, to the lightning lane. You Um, should be able to cut in front of everyone. If you got to pay 800, at fifty dollars an hour, I mean, what if the lightning lane takes like a good forty-five minutes to still go through? If it's like a real popular ride, you should be able to cut through that for that amount. You would think so, but also uh, my experience was there was never like a really long wait for anything. At the most, I would say there was two families in front of us at any given time. I even just off the top of my head, going through doing lightning lanes and things like that, I don't remember a time where I've ever had to wait more than ten minutes, you know, to get on a ride, maybe fifteen minutes tops. You know, without you know, the yeah, yeah. In September, I would expect that. Yeah, 
So That's good. I, again, you know, we went in March, which was a peak season. It's it's spring break, and we use the Genie Plus Lightning Lanes. And again, I don't remember waiting more than fifteen minutes for anything hmm. uh, in the Lightning Lane, of course. So one thing to be aware of as well is that your transportation time that also is included or counts against your touring time. So if it takes you, you know, thirty minutes to get from point A to point B, park A to park B, that's thirty minutes that is getting knocked off your tour. So that's thirty minutes you're not doing something. That's included in the, the time you're paying for. So if you're using Disney transportation, is that what yeah. you're using? You don't get like a special bus. Yeah, or well, something? that's the good news. That yeah, they they have their own personal vans that they take you around the the parks to. So that was a oh okay. A, so yeah, so you don't. And I didn't realize that even though I had read it on the description, it didn't like register to me. They are providing your transportation. It's a like a a twelve passenger van. They take you around. And okay, I'll use some well, examples so of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it really was very efficient. What's nice is that the way our tour guide did it, she, I mean, it's her job. So, of course, she did a good job at this. But, like, she was super efficient uh, with where we went to next and where we up, where we walked to or where we instead rode, rode in the van, things like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I kind of break down a little bit of that when we get to the actual list of everything that we got done which is different uh, than your uber driver it sounds like yeah different uh, <laughs> but <laughs> they, even the vans themselves it's not just like a van in the parking lot somewhere like they have a special sign in the parking lot that says vip tour van so they have a special parking spot they go to and have the vans waiting for you when you get off the rides were they nice vans i mean it's just a, a regular van you know, like, oh, okay. I didn't know if it was like passenger you know, van. It wasn't like any, it nice does seats. have like little, yeah, it doesn't have like leather or it wasn't like a, it wasn't a minivan. Plain oh, well, yeah. Van. Okay. Although it did have like a little, uh, a, le- a VIP logo on the side of the van. So, you know, that, but it's just a, did you a take basic. a picture of the logo? No, because I don't think I've seen it. I'm not supposed to take pictures backstage. Oh, so, so ah. y'all loaded into the park. Y'all parked backstage. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Again, she did a good job of just, of letting us know, like, it's for us to drive here to, and then to drive there. As mm-hmm. opposed to, oh, we're right here. We can just walk to this ride. Also, we want to think about meals because your meal time is also counts against your tour time as well. Obviously, you don't want to have you know a sit down meal in the middle of your tour. I mean, I guess you could if you've got five thousand dollars to blow. You could have you know dinner at uh, right you know Brown Derby or something like that. But it's obviously not a, a good use of time. We had all decided you know obviously we're not going to have any sit down meals. We can just grab something mobile or quick start things like that. We actually ended up not even doing that. We just ended up like grabbing snacks and. Pretzels and pop. Get. Pretzels on beer. Yeah. Mm. That's smart. Yeah. I, I didn't know if you would get like front of the line access to counter service things or anything. I mean, we could, again, we could be doing like mobile orders or something while we're waiting. Um, would she old mobile order for y'all? You know what? They should they have. She probably like while you're on a ride and you put an order with her and she could type it in her little computer pad thing. Whatever. <laughs> I'd be interested to see how that would work because technically, you know, like she's paying, you're paying for your meal still. So how would you get charged for it? Oh, true. Well, I guess it, like, maybe like you, if you get access to your My Disney Experience, yeah, you can something like that. You can place it for you or something. But that's a know. good. Um, I may follow up with that and see like how that would work because that's a that's a good point. Like, can she be doing that? Because there are times where she would get on the rides with us, and times she wouldn't. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So sometimes she would actually ride with us. Sometimes she wouldn't. That had to do with like I think she was like moving the van around and stuff like that too. And then sometimes it just depended on like how many people were in the party to where there was, t- there was 10 of us. So if she rode, that would make it 11. So make it like an uneven number and hard to match up, you know, uh, mm. ride vehicles, stuff like that. Man, if that's a good paying gig I'd, as a cast I probably want that. huh? You know, I will say this. I asked her cause I thought like, Oh man, you must have to have like 10, 20 years experience to, to be a VIP tour. And she said they only have to have one year experience on the job. What? Which I was surprised by that. I guess you have to be really peppy and enthusiastic, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that you have, they're looking for a certain personality type when they're, when they're choosing these tour guides. But I was really surprised Mm -hmm. that like the minimal qualification was a year with the company. One of the last things you want to consider is that gratuity is not included with your price and is, is customary to give your, your gratuity as well. So I was wondering about that bet too. Okay. That's good. At least they get that. Yeah. And it's nice, you know, that they deserve it. They definitely, you know, she was making for a great tour for us. And she was doing a lot of little extra stuff. Like I said, like pushing the kids around in the strollers, keeping the kids entertained, uh, having little chats with the, with the kids and stuff to keep them, you know, occupied and things like that. So, so did um, Elizabeth handle the tip thing or y'all had, y'all I mean, we all pitched in basically. And I don't oh, mind saying one how much, person. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. We paid it to Elizabeth who, who gave it to her at the end. And I don't mind saying how much it was. So Elizabeth actually knew. Uh, a few tour guides personally. And so she asked them and 
they said like a five hundred dollar tip would be would be a good tip for for that that amount of work. So that's okay. we all pitched in like fifty bucks. That's, that's not too tip. bad. Yeah, I guess for six yeah. hours. Yeah, that's not too bad. If you're doing the cheapest tour, four times seven is twenty eight. So that's not quite twenty percent. But yeah. if you're doing the expensive tour, that's ten percent. So, you know, I don't know more just because the tour costs more. It's the same amount of work. So there was basically four different agents and their family with us. So there's me and Joshua. Uh, I mentioned Elizabeth. She was there with her daughter, who's like a uh, high school age. Okay. Uh, which, by the way, like Joshua had like a super big crush on this girl. I don't know what was going on, but uh, oh, yeah. so there's that little, he's a little extra dynamic. Yeah, man. Like every time we would get off a ride, you know, she'd be walking with her mom, and he would always run up there to to stand next to her, and always want to be getting on the ride with her and stuff. So was she receptive to that attention, I or mean, she's like, I mean, she was nice to kid. him. I don't think she wanted to be his girlfriend or anything, but. But she was nice to him. She was like, they got along. He was flexing his game, I guess. He was, I was gonna <laughs> say, keeping him yeah. practice, right? Yeah, also oh, marinara man. over there. Yeah, uh, you, should, you should talk to the T plant as and say, hey, come be my wig man. You know, come wear this paint. <laughs> that ain't right. Did he did, did, get did, this girl? Did he? Did y'all get wet at any point? And he had to take his shirt off. He's like, oh, she got oh, down no, a bit. <laughs> and he was rubbed down in oil and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out, that? baby. <laughs> oh man. Nah, he just was rubbing ice cream on his shirt. He's like, hey, Mickey bars, yo, what's up? And then, all the, <laughs> and then all the animals started coming to him, right? This <laughs> is what it was. It's you like got Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A all over again. Chick-fil-A <laughs> and the ice cream <laughs> combined to bring the animals to your room. Yeah. Oh, Brought all the boys to your yard. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. It's better than yours. <laughs> uh, oh, man. You can tell me, but you'd have to also- charge, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's also oh, another travel agent, Jessica. She was there with children. They were like five and six for the youngest in the group. There was also another travel agent, Amy. She was there with her husband and her kid, who was also about six. Okay. So, we so had, these are all magical many... moments, vacations, yes. agents. Well, exactly. Shout out to those guys, right? Yeah. Fellow colleagues. And it was fun go. too, oh, because please. like anything else, like these are people that you interact with on travel agency groups and things like that, but never actually met them in person. So that was, a, that was always fun to, you know, hang out with them and, and get to know people that you haven't met before. Oh, jo- Joshua didn't get her digits, did she? Did he? Well, like she did. Email? I don't know. He did give us a request on Facebook, so. Oh, okay. you, know, you nah, never know. Right? That's how you get it started. Little friend request. Little friend request, you know? That's all he did. That's all he did. <laughs> But he was he had a good time. <laughs> I, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. He got to ride some fun rides and he, he got to flex some, you know, mating, yeah. ma- mating muscles, I guess, for mm-hmm. lack of a better word saying it. I don't know. Yeah. He got but he had a different animals, type of got to go to the water park. So he had a good time. He had a All VIP right, so, tour. All right. <laughs> yeah, man. So that was the group. Again, we had a varying range. We had, you know, like teenagers. We had adults. We had, you know, younger kids. So. We had a good mix on the rides we wanted to do. Um, All right. So I don't want to go like detail through detail through every ride because, again, like everyone's ridden these rides. We all know what they are, but I'll just give you like a breakdown of everything we got done. So, Kevin, you may have already seen when I posted it in the Facebook group. I don't know if Eli did. Like, how many rides do you think, attractions do you think we can get done in a six hour span? I'll let Eli Mm. guess because, yeah, I did see the video. Okay. Oh yeah, I didn't, yeah, I didn't watch. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go back to look at. It. I mean, six hours with your T plan or just on the door. Yeah, six hours on the tour. Not not. Now we did do more stuff. Me and Josh actually got parked a little before the tour, and we went to some other parks after the tour. But just hmm. for the six hours of the tour, how many attractions do you think we got done? Go with uh, six hours. I mean, you could do at least at least two at one. So I don't know. <laughs> Remember, you, you also got to go. We got to go back and forth. You know, got to go from park to park. Went to three parks. If you didn't know, oh. right. went to three oh. parks. Go for it. You don't second guess yourself. I hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll go with eight. Okay, cool. What's interesting is I posted it on the Facebook group. There was a varying range, six, to like someone said like 22. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I thought 22 was excessive. I'm like, that's a no bit way. much. Yeah. We're not going to do 22. You guys would be uh, dead at the end of the day. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, that's, that's crazy. So we ended up doing 10 attractions. And again, these are all headliner attractions. We didn't do, you know, Muppets or, you know, Philhar Magic or anything like that. that been in and out. So these are all stuff that big timer attraction. So this is what cool. we did. <laughs> I wonder if she ever <laughs> had a party good. that uh, she ever had a party that just recommended like all this, the, like the, the, B or C line, or like, the two <laughs> yeah, cel- like you know, like aliens throwing saucers and, and yeah, Dumbo aliens. and Tomorrowland Speedway. <laughs> well, like, okay, it's so, the worst of the worst. Yeah. <laughs> that's the hundred fifty dollar an hour T plan. Uh, well, that's yeah, the, 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 the fifteen dollar G pass is all you need G-plan. for that. But, uh, the G plan. <laughs> the G plus. <laughs> 
<laughs> but what's crazy is like I made a, what's crazy is I made a TikTok video of like uh, of all the attractions that we did. I'm like, hey, you know, how many attractions do we get done in our day? And I did a little countdown: one, two, three, four, five. And so we did ten. We did ten attractions. If I didn't say it already. And then of course everyone in the comments is like, oh, that's cool. Blah blah blah. I'm like when we go, we did seventeen attractions. And we went like, how did you do seventeen? I can't even think of seventeen attractions I would want to do on a tour. You had to be doing stuff like Small World, right? Right. Like, I don't get it. I throw Peter Pan in that because that's always just so well. That's a, a good time line. saver, though, right? Yeah, it's a good time yeah. saver because you're gonna, if you don't use if you don't use Genie Plus, you're waiting sixty minutes for that for that ride. Yeah. yeah easily 60 to 90 minutes. So yeah, I would say that, but you know, I, I can't see like, <laughs> if you did all day in magic kingdom, I guess you could do 17 attractions, but even then, is there really 17 attractions worth doing on a plaid tour? I don't oh, know. Oh man, they're doing the movies in Epcot. So you got yeah. China, Canada, France. <laughs> Some, uh, that's it. Yeah, I'm man. putting together the worst tour for any plaid. <laughs> worst plaid tour ever. <laughs> what would be the worst plaid tour? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Bathrooms? You said bathrooms, bathrooms go on the tour? <laughs> yeah. How about the VIP bathroom tour? I want oh, all that good, good bathroom. There you go. That'd be, that'd be a good tour. Kevin, you should start a tour company and have the VIP bathroom tour. <laughs> I should. I yeah, put out a little guidebook. You can even like bring your own toilet paper, like special and ultra soft. <laughs> you know, hey, you don't have to use that 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 thin one layer Disney stuff. I got you here. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it feels it a little a- humid today, so let me bring out the heavier stuff, the more hardy stuff. Yeah. Here you go. That way, do the break on you. Yeah, that'd Give be eight hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, <laughs> the air is kind of dry today. Let's break out the Angel Soft <laughs> <laughs> Ultra. <laughs> there you go. All right, so this is what we got done. Uh, we started right. off. We started off. We all met at Baseline Tap House at ten o'clock in the morning. Do you have a pretzel? Uh, we didn't. It wasn't open yet. They didn't open till eleven. So uh, uh, T Plant right. can't get you a pretzel that early. Could have got us in like right backstage. Come on, get us a pretzel. This is what we did. We did Rise of the Resistance, Slinky awesome. Dog Dash, Toy Story yeah. Midway Mania. Yeah. Rock and Roller Coaster, Tower of Terror, Five in One Park, Hot Parks, Everest, Flight of Passage. Okay. Which, by the way, on my video, someone had to correct me. It's not Flights of Passage. It's Flight of Passage. Yeah, it's one flight. Yeah. I didn't. I don't know. Like, I don't know where I said flights, but I'm like, okay, Flight of Passage. Sorry. Didn't mean to offend what, anyone. What the, what's, a, what's a letter between friends? Right. I'm you know, serious, right? People say Walmarts, you know, whatever. Uh, hopped <laughs> over to Epcot, did Soren, Cosmic Rewind, and Remy. So. Nice. So it was a good day. So y'all, y'all didn't go to Magic Kingdom then, I guess. We the plan was if we had time, we would go to Magic Kingdom because Magic Kingdom didn't close to eleven that day. Okay. So that was the plan. Had enough time in our tour, we would hop over to Magic Kingdom and do like seven dwarves or something like that. Something that's a again a a long wait time. Okay. But I will say, like again, this girl was really super efficient with our time. Um, just to kind of give you like some of the breakdown here. So we went on Rise. So right away, we're starting right there at Baseline Tap House. Short right. walk right into Rise of the Resistance. It's mm-hmm. right there at that. Go entrance. through the tunnel. Yeah, you're there. Yeah, yeah, it's right at that exact entrance. And then walked out the other exit or entrance of uh, Galaxy's Edge. Oh, Slink you hit Slicky Dog. Right, right there. Boom. Makes sense. Right then Rock and Roller Coaster? Toy Story Midway Mania. Oh, yeah. Toy Story. Right yeah. there. Mm. Now, again, this was one that I could have lived without, but we did have you know some five, six-year-olds with us. So you know that was something to do. So that's fine. Okay. Uh, I would have probably rather have done like Mickey's Runaway Railway, but you know they like that ride and they're five six year old, so you know we all got to compromise. Mm-hmm. So that was cool. Which, by the way, man, my freaking gun wouldn't work on the on Toy Story Midway Mania, so Joshua destroyed me on that one, man. Well, you know it happens to guys your age sometimes. It just yeah, doesn't quite work well. <laughs> you need that I, I would have took that little blue pill before I got on the ride if I knew. But. A plaid, <laughs> a, a plaid pill in this case. Yeah. You need well, a plaid. No, but actually it would go up fine, so that wasn't the problem. <laughs> <laughs> it was a side to side action that wasn't working on the gun. Oh, well, if it stays that it. far up for about four hours, you, then you got to go see a doctor. Yeah, you got a six hour tour. Yeah. You, know, you got to yeah. see somebody about that. But uh, yeah. so, yeah, man. So Joshua killed me on that one. I'm sure, he was happy about that, right? Yeah. He was, he was, he, he was excited. He, he is competitive, though. Like, I, I beat my daddy. You know hey, you told mm-hmm. his girl that, too, huh? Yeah. yeah. Like, you see my score? What's up? What's the name of this girl? Yeah. Because I don't want to keep calling her that girl. Do you know uh, the name of the girl? Can I you do. can you out that? Oh, well, you don't have to. I mean, we'll let's call not, because yeah, it's, we'll, we'll call her Bertha. I think we're gonna say we're gonna call her his boo. <laughs> oh, oh, we'll do that too. Yeah, Joshua's boo. Bertha Joshua's boo. Uh, boo. Bertha boo. There we go. So Bertha boo. Bert, Bert, yeah, I'm sure he told her that, and she was all, "Oh, that's so nice." So after Rock and Roller Coaster, and we did Tower of Terror. That's when we went backstage. Oh, from from Toy from Story Tower. Mania, you went no, backstage? No, no, no. Toy Story went to Rock and Roller Coaster, Tower of Terror. And then backstage. So we exited out of a different, like if you're going towards the, the photo thing, yeah. 
there's an exit to the right. It's a cast member exit. So we went out that way. Again, like I wasn't even, I wouldn't even catch my snap that we were backstage because we left and it's like, okay, there's, you know, some stairs you go down. And then I see like a big a, a ride vehicle like sitting out there under, under some awning. Or I'm like, oh, I would love to have seen that. What is this doing out here? Well, you could take a picture. Well, I did take a picture, but I didn't, did, I did didn't really? catch my snap. I did because I really and truly didn't catch my snap that we were backstage. So like, you're going to send that to me sometime soon? No, I'm not going to. I, I, I was what like, do you mean, man. no? What? I mean, I can show it to you. I'll, well, yeah, just don't post it. Just don't post it. I'm not going to post it. I just <laughs> want it for my own edification. I'm not going to do anything with it. But I do no, want to see that. Yeah, so I was like, what is this thing doing out here? This is weird. I don't know why I didn't realize that we were, quote, unquote, backstage. Because we even then we were walking by, going to the van, and I seen another van that had the VIP thing on. I'm like, oh, look, there's another VIP girl, a VIP tour right here. And I'm like, we're just taking the bus, to be honest. I thought we were just like, okay, it's going to be faster to get to the bus from here. And then we all started getting in the van. I'm like, oh, now I realize that we are backstage and this is our transportation to the next part. I don't know. Like I wasn't. Oh, there. so y'all, because y'all met at baseline individuals. Yeah. So you took your, to start the tour, y'all took your own transportation to get there. Yes. And then you boarded the, okay, that's, that's the first time y'all saw the van. That's exactly right. Okay, I got you. Exactly I'm right. with you now. I'm with you now. For some reason, I thought they would have picked you up, but no, yeah. Okay, that makes sense now. Well, you know, it. if they they could have, right? If let's say we're all staying at the Contemporary or we're all staying, they mm-hmm. could have came and got us and took us to the park. But again, that's counting towards our park time. So the smart thing to do is meet up inside the park once you're past the ticket booth because that's taking up time to get through the tickets. Uh, Pro tip. Pro tip. I like it. Yeah. So, Pro yeah. tip. So, mm-hmm. so that was her suggestion and we took it and it worked out good. All right. And then we go to Everest and flights of flight of passage. Cool thing. We entered through the backstage area of dinosaur. It was weird because like, again, I didn't catch my snap, but we walked dino- through dinosaur or into dinosaur into the gift shop. And I'm like, mm-hmm. why is there nobody in here? There was literally nobody in the gift shop. I'm like, this is weird. Like it feels, it just feels off. Right. Right. And then I caught my snap. Like the, I guess the attraction had gone down, you know, normally there people in the, in the thing. So, but we went through dinosaur and we're to, to Everest. Uh, it's kind of over that bridge next to uh, Nemo. Yeah. Yeah. So you cross over the bridge. You yeah, see I took Everest a picture off of that bridge. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. So we went to oh, did, So yeah. when you all went from Everest to flight, did you all have to walk that way? Or did she take it backstage? Or some so again, yeah, she took us backstage. So we could have walked, but she goes faster to get back in the van and drive around the, the backside of the park to go okay. to the passage. That's what I was wondering, because that's quite a diagonal way. Yeah, that'd be a, a little bit of a hike, right? It's a haul, yeah. <laughs> And that would have killed yeah, so we you went, time. Went back into Dinosaur, then got in the van, entered the flight of passage. Again, backstage area. Like there's one of those big metal gates that say do not enter. We went in through there and we were right in line for it was kind of close to the gift shop. For okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a gate there. Uh-huh. So again, did flight of passage, then headed to Epcot. Uh now as we were going towards Epcot, we kind of had a decision to make because Remy was down. We we're like, man, like the two of the girl, two of the done Remy before. So they really wanted to do that, but it was, it was down. Plaid was like, well, look, you know, we'll get in the park. You could always come up. And if it does come back up, we'll, you know, we'll go there, but we'll wait for that one. We'll wait to see if it comes up. So we went to Soren. Didn't even think about this, but we couldn't take the stroller in because this whole time we're getting on and off the bus. We're getting the stroller to- too, right? She said, we got to leave the stroller. I'm like, why got to leave the stroller? Like, because with the entrance we were going to, the backstage entrance, we were already into the land pavilion. And right. if you remember that you can't bring any strollers into the land pavilion. You got to park them all outside of mm-hmm. the pavilion. So yeah. since we were already going to be in the land pavilion, we couldn't bring the stroller in. So you could leave in the van. Okay. Yeah, so we just left it in the van, of course. No problem. Yeah. And so after that, went to to do Cosmic Rewind and we went to the backstage area near Test Track. Now, Yo, she is, drove you around? Yeah, we that? drove around. We got back oh, in the okay. van, drove around to, to the backstage area of Test Track and we parked over there. Mm-hmm. Now, at this point, if Remy still wasn't up, we were going to do Test Track. Right. But it did come up. So we're like, all right, well, we're here. We're going to do Cosmic Rewind and then and then if we have time, we'll do Test Track or we'll go to Magic Kingdom, whatever you guys want to do. Again, like, not doing test track wouldn't have been the end of the world for me. I agree with that. I, uh, you know, like, yeah, yeah, much. I'm okay with it. Times. But I yeah. will tell you this, like something that I never noticed before. And even when I knew it, I still didn't notice it. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But when you are on the outside part of test track, mm-hmm. you're backstage. Yeah. You're backstage. Yeah. Yeah. Like so you but, saw the cement markings, right? That you normally yeah, throw in. Yeah. So you see like the, the track up top, you're walking under the track. As you're mm-hmm. as you're in backstage, but I this whole time I've ridden test track and I've never noticed that down there. So it's I think it's partially just the the angle of the track how it kind of yeah it's kind of like at a little sideways so you're not seeing it. 
but you're also not paying attention to that. You're not, I'm sure if you really looked hard, you backstage area, it seems like the way Disney built the attraction, it's set up to where you can't see the backstage area, but it's plain as day. Like it's right there. Like it's all like employee parking and big dumpsters and everything else, you know, but oh, yeah. when you're on that attraction. You don't see it. Well, they got that, all that paint marking on that concrete. Uh huh. That kind of throws it off where you can't really tell because it swirls. Yeah. And you can see this from Google Maps, but uh, I noticed that because I, I remember to look for it every time I go through there because I remember seeing on Google Maps. But I do remember one time I did see a van parked there for some strange reason. I was like, that van's not in that space. I don't know how that works. But uh, you saw it on yeah. Google Maps or you saw it while you're riding the ride? Well, I, I saw that swirl on Google Maps, but then I saw the van while I was riding the ride. Okay. And, it, yeah, I mean, and it's like it was parked underneath the track. I was like, that's oh, odd. Oh, yeah. Like I said, man, like I've never noticed it. And again, I guess because you're really paying attention to the attraction, right? You're, you're going, going, yeah, you're fast, looking straight. Yeah. You're hauling ass or you're taking pictures of your kid screaming his head off or whatever, you know. But <laughs> um, so, yeah, I never noticed that. Now, to be fair, loud. I do feel kind of weird when I look, turn my head when we're going uh -huh. in that little turn because of the speed, I guess. I don't know. So maybe mm -hmm. I don't do that too often, but I do notice that it's there. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's neat. So I'm going to try to look squirrel. for it next time. But the crazy thing is, again, we ended up, me and Joshua ended up riding it after the tour. And even though I knew to look for it, I still didn't look for it. Just you're so enthralled with the ride that you don't even pay attention to it. So I'll, I'll point it out next time uh, we ride it together. Yeah. I'll try to, I'll try to remember to do it like that. Yeah. And so that was it, man. Like I said, that was, it, it was so efficient. I was really happy the amount of stuff we got done. Yeah. I really felt like she did a great job laying it all out, making sure that we got in as much as possible. I mentioned like the snacks. One yeah. thing, like she was constantly like grabbing waters and we'd get off a ride and she'd have like bottled waters waiting for us. Nice. Or, or you oh, know, fine. we were like after Everest, we went and grabbed some popcorn and some pretzels real quick. And she got all that. She got that all for us. Like complimentary or you? you had complimentary. To complimentary. Wow. I, I don't know if that's officially included with it or if she just kind of is like, oh, Disney doesn't care, you know, and you guys are, you know, cool or whatever. But I, I don't know if it's something you should expect, I guess is what I'm saying. That'd be cool if they gave she him like did. a little entertainment budget. Like, you, you know, yeah like, a like, yeah, like you could spend like up to this much for each party, you know, and simple things like waters or what, especially in hot days. I yeah, think that's, that's fair. Yeah, that makes more sense. I mean, you got to snack on something sometime, whether the time goes against you or not. Even waters, you know, yeah. Like if you're doing this on a summer day, you want to keep your people happy and hydrated. 100%. You know, she wasn't getting us the free waters either. She was getting us, you know, bottled water. Oh, it was something that definitely came out of somebody's pocket somewhere. But Dropping we the just, bucket for Disney. Yeah. I mean, what's a what's a couple of pretzels between friends, you know? That Disney yeah. plus money. It wasn't even based yeah. on half house pretzel. It was, you know, it was Animal Kingdom pretzels. What yeah. a cheese so, pretzel? Jalapeno yeah, cheese, cream yeah. cheese. She did get, yeah, we got cheese. We, if we wanted a little side of cheese too, if we wanted it. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah some options. Oh, and here's the thing too. I, I forgot to mention this on Tower of Terror. As I said before, you, you do go in Lightning Lane. You just go to, you know, whatever the special lane for the VIP tour. But for Tower of Terror, we actually went through a third lane. Because you know, like when you go in Tower of Terror and you're, you're at the point where it splits into two. Yeah. You know? Uh, we can go to the elevator A or elevator B. There's actually a third space. And I think it's probably like the wheelchair accessible mm -hmm. because we went like down some stairs instead of going through the line and then splitting like that. We went down like this and there was a, like a little platform and that put us on the right hand side of the ride, the, okay. the right hand side of the elevator. So that was one where we actually didn't wait behind everyone else on the, the actual lightning lane. Huh. Okay. So we did get split up on Rise of the Resistance. Uh, basically, me and Joshua got put with a different party and the other people were riding together, but that was the only time we ever got split up. Which is no big deal. So what do we get to talk about? Yeah, Bertha Boo? Bertha Boo. Uh, no, she was with her mom. Was, that would have been a good... I'd be like, hey, Joshua, sit with, sit with Bertha over here. I'll, I'll, go, with, I'll go with Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth! <laughs> yeah, I should have like, <laughs> let them go on Small World together or something, but... Uh... <laughs> There'll be another oh, time. Yeah, Haunted Mansion or something. Like yeah, Facebook friends now, so yeah, there'll yeah. be another time. Uh, so, like, while you were back there, did you see any, like, weird, you know, anything weird with, like, some of the characters or characters you wouldn't normally see? Somebody with the maybe the head taken off or something weird, like, anything like that just kind of looked unusual? No, because I don't think there was anywhere that would have been characters where we were at. It was mostly, you know, because, again, we went backstage to uh, Tower of Terror, for example. So we didn't see anybody in their, you know, butler uniforms or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a couple of times, you know, we saw some people just hanging out, taking a break. There was some little break areas when you're going through, which one was it? Oh, when we were going through the backstage of dinosaur, there's some dinosaur prints on the stairs. It was kind of cool. Mm. So that, was, that was, that was interesting. <laughs> That's cute. It was one, I don't remember which attraction it was, but we passed by like this, 
I guess I can just call it an employee board where people like sign on it. Joe, 2002 to 2008. Okay. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, like you see like the workings and, you know, that these are, you know, just regular people, you know? Mm-hmm. So of course, you know, you see them out there as characters and, yeah, but you know, you see like their break areas and I didn't see anybody smoking. And I was mm-hmm. like, I wonder if they can get like, if there's like a smoking area, something like that. Or if they're allowed to smoke at work. Wonder about that. Yeah. Like, I was just wondering. Did they go back like to work smelling like, like smoke or something? You know, like sure tea plant warning or something like it's a tea plant tour. Everybody be on your best behavior. They're coming through. They're coming through. You know? <laughs> they probably got no think, pop up notifications um, on their phone. Like when the tea thinking, plants yeah. around and they're yeah. like, doot, 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 like a hurricane warning. Like, oh, tea <laughs> plant. Uh, they, they, oh. they, they scatter. They sc- <laughs> and they all hide. Like, yeah, they hide. Like, pew. Let's get out of there. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, look, it looks like the path is going right instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, let me just tell you this. We did a little right. did a little uh, Disney math here. So I asked the I asked our tour guides like how many VIP tour guides are there? Uh she said there's about 130 VIP tour guides at any given time uh employed. That's okay. their job. She also said there's about 80 in the parks daily. Damn. So on any day there's about 80 guides going on 365 days a year, right? So at the at the $450 mark, that's $1,149,750 in a year. Dropping a bucket. So even if half of those are the expensive ones, let's just say half of them are the eight hundred dollar ones, then you're up to a million six, million six fifty nine three fifty. I can see why Disney wants to promote these. Overall, this is a great way to see the parks. I will tell you that obviously every tour is gonna be a little and what you want to do and what you want to accomplish. Obviously, we were trying to get as much done and hit as many big attractions as possible. Mm-hmm. So that being said. It wasn't quote unquote relaxing. It wasn't like you're constantly oh, moving. Yeah, it wasn't just a chill day because we were kind of like go next one, go next one, go, trying to get as much done as we could. But that was our choice. You know, again, you could you could go a little slower if you wanted to, or you know, do some stay in one park things like mm-hmm. that. But that being said, even though it wasn't relaxing day, like I didn't feel tired. Like you know, like after six hours walking in the park, you usually like beat. Right. Like man, I'm ready to go back to the hotel. But I mean, I was ready for more once once four o'clock rolled around. And I don't know that you can really like quote unquote put a price on your tour guides because again, there's just these little things that you don't realize are happening. The grabbing snacks, helping push the strollers, keeping the kids entertained, all that kind of stuff. It's like, how do you put a number on that? It's not really a, a definable. Uh, value to me. The other thing is, I think that most people, if they're going to do this kind of thing, they're going to split the cost, right? Either between mm-hmm. two or three families or like we did with four people. If it's just me, I mean, my wife and three kids and I'm paying for it all, it's hard to justify personally. Oh well, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I just don't see that, but let's just say that we got like eight or 10 more weekends together and we're all splitting the cost. That's worth it. I also think that obviously these tours are not for everybody. You know, if, if you're a pop century, you know, all-star person, you're probably not selling out the money to do a VIP tour and nothing against those resorts or people that stay at those resorts. I stay at those resorts, but right. it's just not what you're going to spend your money on. Like if you were going to spend $3,000, you'd probably just stay a few more nights and stay, go to the parks for two or three more days. You know, I mean, unless that's what you want to do. I mean, you know, you could save up your money for the VIP tour and all those amenities sure. and maybe save on the other end with the hotel to spend one day and get that many attractions done. that are all big timer attractions. Some of that are on the individual lightning lane that you're going to have to purchase separately. Some that are almost impossible to get into, like uh, the new Cosmic Rewind. Right. You know, like let's say Tron's open. Man, I want to do, co- I'm going to do Cosmic Rewind. I'm going to do Tron too. Like that, that's very enticing. Tron yeah. before it opens. Oh, that, that was, I mean, oh, of what? course we asked, you know, like, you know, any way we could like uh, a little test. Can we ride with the sandbags? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess she said no, right? I guess, yeah, that was, that was a that was a no. That was a hard no. Yeah. That's yeah. a that's a thousand dollar an hour uh tour Shoot. that you got to get. Yeah, right. That's a, that's a you need to do need to know JPEG. Uh, Pay the situation. money and then wear this burlap sack. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like face. a yeah, it looked like a sandbag. And I think yeah. that you know if you've got a very short time, uh, let's say. you for whatever reason, you could only go two or three days to the park. This would be a great way to do a day. You know, like, hey, man, like you're going to get a lot done in one day. Uh, or maybe even just do one day, do your whole day at Magic Kingdom on a VIP tour or a whole day mm-hmm. at Studios on a VIP tour. Like that would be amazing. If you've got, let's say you only got two or three days to do parks. So I, obviously I think that like anything Disney, what is it worth it or not? All depends on you, your budget, your personal situation. But if I had the money, I would do it again. 100%. Uh, it was a great experience. And I think that it's one of those things that you can't really understand it until you do it. Mm-hmm. And once you've done it, it is fun. It is a, a great way to tour the parks. 
Um, so it would be an experience uh, for sure. Yeah. 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 I just need to get a few more, uh, more weekends booking some trips so we can do this. Cool. So you, you enjoyed your experience. So can we talk about Cosmic Rewind now? Yeah, man. I think we should. Uh, <laughs> I've been I chopping it a bit the entire time. A bit. <laughs> yeah, because now, you know, other than me, you're like the second person on this podcast has written it. So it's half of us now. And the other two, hopefully, in the near future, will get to experience it. So I'm curious to know what you think of Disney's latest offering at Walt Disney World. Oh, man. Uh, okay, so it's a great ride. It's a very fun attraction. I think in some ways it's very unique. In some ways it's like, oh, it's a mix of these two. Okay. So it's like, ah, oh, it's a mix between Space Mountain and, um, a rock and roller coaster or what have you. But at the same time, it's very different from those rides as well. I can say that the current setup, there's no reason not to do it. Um, unless your kid just doesn't like roller coasters, but even then, like they, let's say they don't like rock and roller coaster. Mm-hmm. I'd still say they can rewind. You know, I think if you can do big thunder and you can do those mid level rides, you can do this. It's not, it's not scary, quote unquote. Um, it is intense, though. I mean, I would put it that it's it's like you don't stop. Like it's a nonstop. Go, 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 go. Um, and that's why I, can, I put it akin to like Space Mountain a little bit, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's a okay. Let me ask you this: Did you get any of the motion sickness that people talk about? No, I didn't. I didn't at I didn't. all either. I, didn't I, I don't. All. I didn't even think that there would be a reason to like. I understand like Star Tours because we did. I did Star Tours with Joshua on our off time, and I got a little. Uh, you know, you got a little queasy. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And stuff like that. But I didn't, I didn't feel anything on this ride at all. Like I didn't, I didn't, I mean, I guess it affects everyone differently, but like, I don't get why this would be a problem. Like it's not a virtual screen that you're looking at the whole time. Yeah. It's, you're not going upside down like rocket roller coaster either. Yeah. Yeah. That too. You know, it's a pretty smooth coaster. I mean, see, see I, I put it at like the, maybe the same kind of intensity as like rocket roller coaster. Cause it's, uh, when I mentioned it, it's about the same kind of thing. You know, you launch, you go, and it, it yeah. just it doesn't stop. And then you're in darkness. Yes. But I don't feel like I felt the G forces like I feel on Rock and Roller Coaster. And maybe I'm just misremembering, but I don't feel like I didn't ever feel like that, like it pushing against my body like I did on on Rock and Roller Coaster. Well, no, that makes sense. And 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 to be fair, you know, Rock and Roller Coaster is an older coaster system. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's it, they may have improved a lot on the comfort, especially mm-hmm. with the you know the, the fact that the cars do turn to put your attention into where Disney wants you to have it. It may have that yeah. extra added in cushioning that makes it because it's a really smooth, smooth, smooth coaster as compared to Rock and Roller Coaster, I think. And Rock and Roller Coaster is kind of smooth too in and of itself. Uh, yeah, it, the, the, just that maybe that seat cushioning technology is a lot better than. Yeah. Rock and Roller Coaster first came out, you know? So, yeah, yeah to say you're that, right. 100% fair. though. The, the track itself, like, you feel like you're one of the things of riding a, a roller coaster, especially with like the, the loops and stuff like that, is there's always that little sense of danger. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I never felt that with this ride. I never felt like, oh, shit, I could fall out or I could flip upside down or anything like that. Um, it just always is just smooth, but fast. I mean, so fast. Mm hmm. That's the fun part, man. It's just, I get why people really do like this attraction. Now, I still won't say it's better than Rise of the Resistance. Like, Thank everyone's you. like, oh, <laughs> this, is, this is the best ride in Disney. It's better than Rise. I'm like, it's really not. Yeah. It's really not. I mean, is it fun? It's fun as hell, man. It is, it is a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. But is it better than all the different ride systems and the uh, pre show with the, with the interaction with the cast members and all that and the, and the effects? Uh, the, mm-hmm. the, the practical effects? No, not even close. So I don't get that. Like, I don't say how you can say this is better than Rise. Is it the best attraction in Epcot? I don't know about best because there's some like the nostalgia rides. But if you're just talking like thrill rides, it's tops, man. I'm glad you qualified that, like separating out thrill rides versus some other stuff versus the nostalgia yeah. things. Because a lot of people don't think of it that way and they just slump everything in. Sure. I mean, like, you, go ahead. like Dumbo's my favorite ride, but is it the best ride? No, I don't think Dumbo's the best ride. Right. Best attraction, but it's my favorite. So I get that. Well, but- let's do this. Let's compare the mountains with you. Okay, cool. Right. So uh, let's say, because I mean, even though it's not technically a mountain, it is a big blue gray box in the middle yeah. of the future world. Right. Mm-hmm. So it might as well have been a mountain. Uh, let's compare that to, uh, let's just start off Space Mountain. Okay. So I would definitely say I like this more than Space Mountain. Uh, just the smoothness of it. Is it like a hybrid Space Mountain? Yeah, but it's so smooth. You never like, you jerked around like okay. space mountain is, is great. Like one time, <laughs> but after that, okay. I have to do that again. Cause you're like, Oh, oh, oh my stomach. Oh, my back. Oh. Right. My neck, <laughs> my back. <laughs> my knees went out. My knees. Yeah. My sciatica. All right. Uh, how about big thunder in this? Oh, what would you okay. pick? Uh, 
I guess right now, today, I would pick Cosmic Rewind over Big Thunder. Uh, okay. But that could be some of the newness of it. And I, the fact that I only got to do it once and I want to go back in and you know do it again. But today, right now, I'd give the edge um, to Cosmic Rewind. Okay. Eat, Sounds like a slim edge. Yeah, a slim edge. Yeah, I think that's a fair way to say it. I'll, okay. I'll say that. Yeah. And I'm not doing Seven Dwarves because I, I consider that like an intermediate coaster. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, uh, that's not like that's apples to oranges. Um, how about you rode this on the same day, Exhibition Everest and Cosmic Rewind? Yeah, Everest is hard to beat, man. Are it's you putting just, Everest above it? It's, 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 I'm not going to say, let me think about it for a second, but I will say this, like Everest has such a great cue and I love just all the details in there. And I, I just, all of the, the amount of storytelling in it. I don't like the storytelling on guardians of the galaxy. I don't, I, I could see that. I was like, whatever, dude, like y'all are just, y'all are just, I really felt like, Hey, we got to make up something to get you on this. And it didn't make any sense to me, the storyline that they put out there. And even the fact that like, and I guess this shouldn't matter. Some of the people, the characters aren't even from the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Terry Crews, he's not in any of the Guardians movies. He's not going to be in the next one that I know of. So like, why is he part of this thing? Because he was Terry Crews. I yeah. guess so. Like I said, I, I guess that shouldn't matter too much. But God damn. Yeah. Me, that, that threw it off a little bit. Because again, you had, um, I'm sorry, I can't think of her name right now, but. Oh, Glenn Close? Glenn Close. Whatever, yeah, whatever yeah. her character name is. Whatever her character name is. So yeah. she's there. Yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah, she's in the movies. That makes sense. But then I'm like, Terry Crews is in any movies. But uh, that's just, I guess. Nitpick. But he will be. <laughs> maybe. Maybe God, he's going to be the third one. I don't know. The third one, yeah. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I just felt like the storyline was kind of weak. Like, oh, you know, we're on this tour and blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's danger. We got to go over here and save. You got to. And then at what point do you save anything? Like, you don't save anything on the ride. You just ride past this big monster and you see him going somewhere and you're like, okay, cool. Celestial. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, but we didn't do anything to affect that or to, to do, you know what I mean? Like that's part of the storyline. It's like, you're, yeah. you're part of the, of saving the universe, but we didn't do anything. We just rode past it. So, right. Right. Uh, so, okay. So to answer your question, Expedition Everest versus Cosmic Ruin. I probably would, again, slight margin to F, but there could be some nostalgia to that ride. I really like that ride a lot. I mean, there's more physical effects in Everest, so I'd give it yeah. a little more than a slight margin for sure. Yeah. And so I, I think, like I just think it's that Joe Rody difference, you know, as far as storytelling goes. <laughs> yeah. I would, yeah. I mean, if I think if, if Cosmic Rewind had a better storyline or a more engaging storyline, that it could beat out Everest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, how about this versus Rock and Roller Coaster, which I think is like the, the, the generation before. Of yeah. This coaster. What do you, what do you, yeah. how, comparing those two, what would you, what I'll would you still, think? I'll give it to Cosmic Rewind on this one. I will. Yeah. I think though that obviously with with rock and roller coaster, you've got the corkscrew, you've got the loops, so that's fun. But there's just something I think, it, and I, would, I could be wrong, but isn't Cosmic Rewind a little bit longer too? Like that ride seems to go on for a long time. It's long, yeah. I mean, although I th- I think to your statement about story, I feel like rock and roller coaster, rock and roller coaster may have a better story behind it. Yeah. I mean, you I know, you're hopping a super stretch limo to get to a concert quickly. Cause they're late. <laughs> yeah. You know, it know sums it up in one true. sentence. Whereas cosmic rewind is like, I don't know what the story was. We're supposed to save something, but something. Yeah, it's, it's pretty convoluted. It's pretty convoluted. I saw a celestial and boom and planet and back. <laughs> um, I'm, and maybe I'll give it also to Cosmic Rewind because it's also one of those things where not everyone's going to be able to ride Rock and Roller Coaster and obviously not everyone can ride Cosmic Rewind because there is a height restriction but I think your kids are going to be able to ride Cosmic Rewind more so than Rock and Roller Coaster because of, there's no loop kind of things yeah there's no loops there's no corkscrews there's no craziness so I could um, see that yeah so it sounds like uh, did I miss out any other big coasters I, mean, I don't Space think I Mountain, did but I mean, uh, well, we talk about it. Oh, Splash Mountain, Splash but not really. So, like, it's not really a coaster. It's just yeah, it's, got the drop. It's a flume ride in the amusement park yeah. world. Flume. So it's a little different. Flume. So, okay, yeah. So it sounds like Cosmic Rewind is your number two so far, with Expedition Everest being number one and then everything else behind it. Yeah. And again, yeah. maybe after I ride Cosmic Rewind three or four more times, then it won't be. But right now, I think there's still that, oh, I want to, you know, I want to experience it again so I can pay more attention to this or, you know, pay more attention to other things in the queue or sure. on the ride itself. But I mean, it is a fun ride. I get it. Mm-hmm. I understand why people like it. It's definitely worth the individual lightning lane purchase, whatever that may be. I think right. uh, this week it was $17 is what I saw. So it's definitely the most expensive one right now. It's the highest mm-hmm. of anything that's ever been, but I'd pay it 100%. Anything uh, else? No, I think that's it. I mean, we did, me and Joshua did get to do some stuff again before the park and then before the mm-hmm. tour and after the tour. 
We ended up spending some time at uh, the water park at Typhoon Lagoon the next day, which was really nice. Okay. Uh, we can talk about that when show. I don't want to, man, I hate to talk about Typhoon Lagoon when Danny's not on the show. Oh, we should save it for Danny then because he, I'm sure he'd want to talk about it as well. That's his jam. So, yeah. Uh, the only last thing I was going to ask, uh, just throw it out to you guys. Like, if you were going to do a VIP tour, like, what would be your, and I don't know if you can say 10 or not, but let's just say your top attractions you'd want to do. Like, what would be your priorities if you were going to do a tour? <laughs> well, I'm still stuck on the, the, crafting the worst tour ever <laughs> i want the china the china uh, the movie in china a wondrous china whatever they're calling it now i yeah. want uh, whatever france movie's playing i want the canadian movie i mean hell we'll throw american adventure in there just for giggles oh, since wow. we're in that area uh let's see so that's four uh, um, bathrooms bathrooms uh small world we'll throw that in there oh i can't even say uh i can't oh, the- even say the plays, the demo plays, you want that? Yeah, let's do that. We can put in there. <laughs> the, the demo play, the musical, we could do that one. All the show. Well, Fellow Fel- Magic, I like. Maybe we'll throw that in there just because I do like that one. And Muppets. Mm. So there's two good ones. And then, well, I need a, one more. What's my 10th one that sucks? It not really sucks, but it's just not like. Not worth your time. Yeah, not worth your time or money not for this. Not worth your time. Um, uh, let me think. Let me think. I know there's one out there. Uh, oh, Alien Swirling Saucers. There we go. There's my yeah. 10. The, the worst tour ever. <laughs> yeah. So I, I said to you, like we, me and Joshua got to the park a little bit early. We were supposed to meet up at 10 mm-hmm. parks opened at eight. So we could get in at eight as our guests. So we were like at the gate at 45, which no surprise, right? Like the, yeah. we got up early to the parks, even after not getting to the hotel till 11 o'clock at night, you know, we did rock and roller coaster like three times. And then we're right. like, okay, what else can we do? I said, well, we can do slinky dog. I was like, well, but the wait's like 40 minutes. Like we're going to get on the tour. So let's go do aliens, aliens, throwing sauce. And we did. So it was fun. You know, I'll take out one of the good ones. I'll take out one of Phil and Magic and or Muppets just because to keep it less consistent. And I'll replace it with Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy. There we go. Oh, man. Joshua kept wanting to go do that. I'm like, no, dude, we're not going. <laughs> no, we're not going to go see cars. Like, I, I think he thought it was a ride, you know. And Yeah, is, no, it's not a ride. It's not all. a ride. It's just you just sit there and watch a show. And we there's did no wait time. at all. And we yeah. did it already. Mm-hmm. We did it when we went in March. So I'm like, no, nah, dude, we don't need to do that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but he he's a rock and roller coaster fiend, man. We did rock and roller coaster three times before yeah. we did the tour. We did it on the tour, and then we did it one more time before we left for the day. So we did right. rock and co- roller coaster five times that day. Man, nice. your stomach nice. must have been compressed like that. Man, I will tell you, third one in the morning, and we hadn't eaten breakfast yet. I was like, I'm done, dude. Like, I can't do this anymore. Let's go. Oh, uh, I mean, I was so done. I was like, let's go to Tower of Terror. That's better than what we're doing right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we had man, scrambled like, innards. Yeah. 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 Oh man! Uh, all right, E. What's your ten, man? What, what would you put together for a vip? Uh, ten is uh is a lot, but for me, I I, I mean, or like, how uh, would you how would well, how would you want to spend a VIP tour? It doesn't have to be even ten rides. Like, what would you want to do if you're paying four hundred fifty dollars uh, an hour? See, the 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 main thing that would that gets me is that will always get me is that since I'm a, a Marvel person, I always have to go to California or, or someplace else. I, I can't really go to Florida. Well, you could do Van Peter in California. You want to do California? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I would have to do that. Th- those are the things that would uh, make me inquisitive the most. But um, oh, see that, that I think I would do that, too. I would do California for my VIP. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I would definitely like to see, you know, more of Avengers campus. I mean, when, of course, when we went, it was it was on the, the, the trip with like, you know, all of the the family members so it's like a lot of people were going back and forth but if there was a chance to see a, i guess a backstage version of that because what we just saw was like the headquarters and then the ship so hopefully they've done a lot more since then and when we went i think it was uh at night during halloween so i didn't really get a chance to kind of see everything looked in the day so that would be that would be something cool i would want to check out of course like cosmic rewind because that's that's new. I would I would go on. I would do Rise. I would definitely do Mickey's Runaway Railroad. Probably mm-hmm. a couple of times. I could kind of check that out. There's a um, lot. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. in there. I, yeah. I wonder if like someone would just say, I want to do Tower of Terror all day long. I'm just going to pay five grand just to ride Tower or whatever their favorite ride is. Maybe ride like the same, cause I'm, you know, I don't see any reason why you couldn't do it like two or three times. Yeah. You're paying that for makes it. sense. I mean, yeah. I would do that, but yeah, that, that makes sense. But I'm old. I mean, like if I was younger, I guess, or, or, you know, I had someone that was like, yeah, yeah, let's do that. I got to do that. Then, yeah, I'd let them do that all day, you know, for sure. But 
No, I, <laughs> I would not want my stomach hanging out where my eyeballs are. That, I would not. Uh, that. That's a that's a lot. I I definitely would want to take. A, I think the tour is probably the backstage part of it would be worth it, just if there's a chance to see how something works uh, internally. But um, oh, that's fair, man. Because I'd love to see the landing. The, you know, the the animatronic Spider Man that flips. I'd like to see what it looks like. Oh, when it yeah. Lands. When it lands or, or yeah. something like yeah, something like something like that. That's uh, that's 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 different. Um, mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind, of course, you know, doing um, yeah, yeah, like you know, do the Yeti ride. Of course, I, I don't, I don't mind doing that. I like to do that whenever I, I go. But yeah, for the most part, I would just keep it with the with the newer stuff. I mean, Radiator Springs is, of course, better than Test Track, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So that's a I good mean, opinion. No, yeah. that's a good opinion. Uh, so yeah, I would probably take it to California. And, and, I think and that's I, a, I would hit those. I that's, think that's a that's, good take on it, man. Because absolutely, yeah, especially again with the two parks being right there, you could really get a lot done in one day. Yeah, and six eat hours, six, seven hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I having time to eat. Can I yeah, get the fast seven. pass lane to the churros? <laughs> well, my original float. recipe: turkey leg. Oh, your float yeah. and a corn yeah. dog. Can we just have an eating? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> forgot about that, uh, Eli. We did. I did get a coke float while I was out there. Not a root beer float. I like a coke float, but I did get a coke float. There we you go. got a flu. Yeah. She had it ready for you. Oh no! This was after. This was after the tour. Ah. Uh, Joshua hanging out. Joshua got a big ice cream sundae, and I got a a coke float. And you thought ah. about Eli with every yeah. sip and suck. I like, yeah. yeah, and I was like, this paper <laughs> straw sucks. I need a real straw. Get a real but, straw. I need a real man uh, straw. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell this is? I'll give it me. Cool. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, yeah, man. So uh, just to recap again, I I would say that. If this is something that you're interested in, we could definitely uh, set this up for you on your on your next trip. It's definitely something I would look into, especially if you're traveling with multiple families that could split the cost of it. I think it's a really good way to see a lot of things and get a lot of stuff done. And of course, as you can tell, this brings us to the end of our discussion. And look, your opinions are always welcome on the show. So shoot us an email at show at magicarway.com or call us or text us at one 815 That is one 815 Six six nine four two two six, and of course, uh, these two guys uh, do things outside of the podcast. And as you heard, uh, he's been talking about it this entire time. Lee's uh, travel agency helped work with him with this trip. So, Lee, how can they book this VIP vacation with you? Right, you just give me a call at eight three two four three one sixteen twenty one. That's eight three two VIP, not P E E. You can email me at Lee at magicarway dot com. You can uh, catch me on Facebook at facebook.com slash lost travel. That's L S T O V I C A travel. And Instagram, you got a friend in the travel. And TikTok, you got a friend in Lee. If you do any of that, we'll get you hooked up with no. Hasselvika! And of course, that voice you just heard is Eli of ivorycomics.com. If you want to patronize him and get some of his awesome comic wares, Eli, how do they do that? Uh, yes, you can always go to the Ivory Comics website. So that's www.ivorycomics.com. You can see everything I have from uh, Savages to Molly Be Damned, their Project Geisha. Uh, there's interviews and there's uh, blog posts. And of course, there's a link to this podcast. So you never miss an episode. You never miss an opinion. You never miss a T Plan report. So uh, always support uh, the indie comics, and Ivory Comics is a good place to start. Uh, Facebook.com. I'm there too. Uh, Eli H. Ivory, as long as you're a real person. It's nice to meet you, but if you're a bot, I don't need to greet you. And I keep getting them too. It's even worse now when I put what? on a notification on my phone. It's just a new bot wants to talk to you. New bot suggestion over and over. I got to keep swiping. You no know, bot. No bot. Keep swiping. Bertha bot. Uh, Bertha bot. <laughs> Bertha no bot. Bertha boo bot. <laughs> Bertha boo bot wants to be your friend. She got no <laughs> other friends. But you, that's like no way. I don't know. It's you. usually like Bertha Boobot six six nine four two <laughs> underscore because they don't know how to spell. I've had, I think we we've had some people on a quick side note. We had a few people like, oh man, I know. Uh, you always say that thing, man. That's funny. That's funny. I'm like, no, that's a real thing. And uh, I've shown it to people, mm-hmm. the bots that I, that I've got, and they're like, oh wow, really? I'm like, yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. It's always nice when some like a woman shows up and says she would be your friend, and she's got this amazing body in the bikini and all this other stuff, but there's no, she doesn't say anything else after that. Like, that's a bot, man. Playing my affections like that anyway. Jenny is a bot. It's bot. <laughs> uh, uh. Um, 
Project Geisha has a Facebook page. You can always go there. Uh, so Facebook.com slash Project Geisha. Instagram, I'm there to post up hearts and locks, likes and uh, not many bots there. So uh, EIV504, you can find me there. And of course, on Twitter, I can be found at Hancock1066. So if you appreciate the madness, you just bring me the gladness. Thank you very much. And look, to support the show as a whole, man, go to patreon.com forward slash magic our way. There you find six awesome tiers to support the show. Also, you can go to our website, magicourway.com, and then you can find all of our stuff there. So, guys, look, thanks for listening. Magic out. Cool. Boobs, boobs, boobs. Popcorn and pretzels on the run. <laughs>